in your working folder, you will find an image by the name of redeye.psd. Go ahead and open that up. This is almost a down and dirty trick. It's very easy. Years and years ago, when I was teaching Photoshop classes before the Red Eye tool came out, it took a couple of steps. I had a couple of layers. I used black paint. I used a blending mode. It worked really good. Don't get me wrong. It did remove Red Eye, but it was a very tedious thing to do. When the Red Eye tool first came out a long time ago, it really didn't do as good a job as it does now. Every version of the program seems to get better. And the last couple of versions of Photoshop actually really do have a very good Red Eye tool. So as you can see in this photograph, there's Red Eye. Now Red Eye is generated, and I think you know this, usually by the flash that's built into your camera. As a matter of fact, they should rename that tool the Red Eye Generator, and you'll have an idea of what it's supposed to do. Most high-end cameras don't come with a built-in flash because they don't want you to use it, number one, and they understand its limitations. And typically people who are really into photography have their own flashes or lighting systems. In this case, I did use it. It bounced off his eyes, got the blood vessels at the back of the eye to come back to the lens, and boom, you get red eye. How do you get rid of it? Like I said, this is very easy. If you come over here into this tool here, we talked about this one earlier in this chapter, way at the bottom, you have something called a red eye tool. That's the one we haven't looked at yet. Pick it up. Now, when you use the red eye tool, you do have some options up here. You have a pupil size, which defaults to 50%. And you have a darkened amount that defaults to 50%. I would say 99 out of 100 times, that's going to be fine. I find, though, if I'm working with animals like dogs who have more of a greenish tinge than a red, changing the darken and pupil size sometimes works a little bit better. But most human beings are fine with those two settings. They don't work. You can change them. Let me drag background down on the new icon. Now, that makes a copy. That way we can see the before and the after. Come over here with the tool and go ahead and just click on that area and then do the same thing over here. Get right in the middle of it and click. Now the before and the after, you can't get much better than that. Well, you could if you took the photograph up front without using the built-in flash. However, in most cases, if it happens, it's a very easy thing to fix in this program. Just remember they've tucked the tool underneath the spot healing brush tool and all these others. It's right here at the bottom. Don't forget you got that one. It's nice.